Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. I rise today to follow up on the questions that I had brought to the government's attention and my concerns with their lack of action uh, with uh, ensuring that um, Afghans who are fleeing and hiding from the Taliban would be able to get to safety. I also raised uh, with the government um, during this period that there are over 300 former Afghan interpreters whose families that have been left behind. They have made an application, done tremendous amount of work in guiding the government in bringing forward the necessary immigration measures to support their loved ones so that they can get to safety. Unfortunately, even with all of that guidance, the government has not been able to move forward in bringing their loved ones to Canada. The problem rests with the government's inability to process these applications in an effective and efficient manner. They're requiring individuals to provide documentations to which many of them would not have because they've had to burn them. Because if they are found to have these documentations where they are supporting the Canadian military, working with the Canadian military, or have any links to the West, the minute that the Tal Taliban finds such documentations on them or in their residence, they would actually be targeted. This cannot be allowed to happen. And so the Afghan interpreters have made these applications following the government's rules, and of those 300 applications, only 35 percent of them have been processed. 65 percent of them have yet to still even receive a G number. They have not received acknowledge from the government. And this is the reality. And the urgency is getting so grave. And in fact, Madam Speaker, we found out yesterday at the committee, uh, the Afghan the Special Committee on Afghanistan, that the Department of uh, National Defense has submitted 3,800 applications that, that they have approved, that they have vetted to immigration. And yet, of those 3,800, only 900 of them have been processed. 2,900 of them is sitting somewhere to which nobody knows wh where it is or what's happening with them. In the meantime, we're getting media reports of individuals, these people, the, the Afghans who've supported the Canadian military, and they are being hunted down by the Taliban, being tortured by the Taliban. That is the reality. There is such urgency in this situation that I really don't get what the government is doing. They can get up every day and say how, what a great job they're doing, but the reality is, is that they're not doing a great job. There are so many family members who've been left behind and their lives are in danger every minute of the day as we speak. And this cannot be allowed to happen. So I want to know from IRCC, I want to know from the Minister of Immigration, what's happening to those files? Why why can't they find them in the system? GAC has also made referrals to IRCC, and I'm learning that those referrals that has been sent to IRCC have also vanished into thin air. In fact, IRCC is now asking the families or the representatives here in Canada to go back to GAC and ask them to resubmit those referrals. What on earth is going on with IRCC? Have they lost these files? Do they not realize that every minute of the day matters in the lives of these individuals? That we as Canadians owe these families to bring them to safety, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health and to the Minister of Sports. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And let me start by thanking the member for her deep concern about the ongoing crisis in Afghanistan and for the people that are affected there. We as a country in Canada uh, remain deeply concerned about that ongoing crisis and we take this very seriously and remain committed to do all that we can to support the Afghan people. Canada is also unwavering in our commitment to defend the fundamental rights of all Afghans. And this is an important part of who we are as Canadians. This is a personal thing for me, actually, Madam Speaker. My mother arrived here as a refugee in 1956. It is also important, uh, it's an important part of how we engage with allies and how we contribute to global stability around the world. 
Since the Taliban forcefully took over Afghanistan, the world has witnessed the steady deterioration of social and economic systems in the country, leading to the largest humanitarian crisis around the world. We've also seen violence and the erosion of fundamental rights, including those of women and girls and religious and ethnic minorities. C'est pourquoi le Canada n'a pas l'intention. That's why Canada does not intend to recognize the Taliban as a legitimate government of Afghanistan. But Canada is also aware of what this crisis can mean for regional security. Our obligations. We've committed to welcoming at least 40,000 Afghans to Canada under our special immigration measures and humanitarian immigration programs. We're doing everything that we can to help the many who supported Canada's efforts over the years but still remain in Afghanistan and neighboring countries. We're helping them resettle in Canada. And Madam Speaker, I would say that a couple of, uh, of former Canadian Armed Forces members in my riding of Milton have been in touch with my office and we've successfully resettled a couple of dozen in Milton. I'm proud of that work. We've also responded quickly and expeditiously to bring Afghan citizens and their families safely to their new homes. We are ensuring that we uh, bring new arrivals and, and they're being managed in a way that sets them up for success and that communities um, and service providers have the capacity to integrate those individuals and families successfully. In addition to our immigration programs, in 2022, we've allocated $143 million in humanitarian assistance to support the humanitarian response inside Afghanistan and in neighboring countries. Canada is doing this through the United Nations agencies which prioritize the provision of life-saving food and nutrition assistance. It's essential that humanitarian support remains principled, needs-based and separate from political and security objectives. Canada, along with other like-minded donors, are also carefully weighing how to address basic needs beyond humanitarian needs while following closely the Taliban's actions towards protecting the fundamental rights of all of its citizens. This includes maintaining an inclusive and representative government and the rule of law. It's true that the Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan has made it more complex to carry out activities in the country without risk of contravening Canada's criminal code. The Taliban remains a listed terrorist entity. Departments from across the government are seized with this issue and are actively working to identify a solution. Madame le Président, en conclusion... Madam Speaker, in conclusion, Canada, Canada's commitment to Afghanistan and the Afghan people is there. It is demonstrably clear, and we are working in close coordination with our international partners to deliver support that is yielding results. ...to explore mechanisms for assistance beyond humanitarian uh, means to support basic human rights. We will be guided by our long-standing values. It will not include a course of action that deliberately or inadvertently legitimizes the Taliban regime. Thank you, Madam President. The Honourable for Vancouver East. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. The Liberal government just don't get it. They are not acting with the level of urgency that is required. They are not waiving the burdensome red tape that's been foisted on the families to ask them to fill out application forms and then only to layer more application forms. And even though all of that's been done, and even though the Department of National Defense has verified these individuals, that they have an enduring relationship with Canada, that they are at, at risk, uh, and that they have service Canadians, that the government can find these files that has been referred by the, Na the Department of National Defense or from GAC. How is this even possible? Do they not realize, Madam Speaker, that when they delay in the processing, when they delay in action, that they're putting lives at risk? I am calling on the government to waive those documentation requirements and to issue them immediately with single ju travel journey documents so they can get to safety now. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Canada is committed to Afghanistan and the Afghan people, and I've outlined tonight a series of concrete actions taken in response to the humanitarian crisis caused by the Taliban regime. We recognize that there remain vulnerable people in Afghanistan and neighboring countries, and we are doing what we can to assist them. The only viable way to improve the situation in Afghanistan is through continued collaboration with our international partners. Nous continuons à demander le passage en tout. We will continue to ask for the safe passage for vulnerable people as well as for the principal delivery of humanitarian assistance. ...representative government and the protection of fundamental rights, including the rights of women and girls and religious and ethnic minorities. Let there be no doubt, Canada's commitment to, is demonstrably clear. We have allocated financial resources and taken concrete action through a whole-of-government approach, and we are changing lives every single day. Thank you, Madam Speaker.